Welcome back everybody. Uh, we're working on this 4.6 motor again, um, and today we're gonna go over bearing clearances. I'm gonna jump straight into it, uh, cause this is gonna be a pretty intuitive little video um, to see how to get this process done. This is how you check bearing clearances the correct way. It's the most precise way, um, it's the best way. So plastic gauges give you a rough estimate of where you're at. I've used plastic gauges before, um, but this is a little bit more accurate. Um, so I've got it basically already set up. Um, I got my cap off, I've got my bearing in. Here's my main cap, I've got my bearing in the main cap. Everything looks good there. Um, <clears throat> and then I've got my hardware and everything else is, you know, a little bit of a mess, but we're getting things done. So uh, this is our micrometer that we use to measure the actual um, main journal on the crankshaft. So you wanna measure the main journal uh, that's gonna go into whatever main cap it's gonna go into, that way it's precise. So for this one, I've already measured it. Um, it is exactly centered and perfect. So that's the correct measurement there. Um, the measurement for this one is 2.6466 inches. And we're not really concerned about exactly what the measurement is. We're more concerned about what the clearance is gonna be. So the way we do this is um, very lightly put it in a vise. And we have our bore gauge. The bore gauge you can use to measure actual measurements, um, but again, we're just looking for a difference because the difference is gonna be the space between this main journal and the bearings. Um, so in order to do that, what I've done, this would be kind of hard to see, but um, I'll explain it as I do it. So the way this gauge works is it has this little pin in here and then this is kind of a centering piece that moves uh, in and out. So when you put it into a round cylinder, that centering piece makes it, um, puts it in the center of the bore. And this little tiny pin right here gets pushed in and out. And when that little tiny pin gets pushed in and out, that's what moves our gauge. So what I did, and this, like I said, it's already set up, so I've already got the pin and everything dialed in. Everything's, everything's already set up, that way I don't have to waste your time. Um, when I put this into our micrometer, I get zero. Now, the way that happens is you have to kind of move it around, and you gotta think it's three-dimensional world, so you have to move it this way, you have to move it this way. You gotta move it around in kind of a circle until you find zero. Um, and where you find zero is, see how it looks like it's not reaching that zero yet, but if I tilt it another direction, I can get it to reach zero. Zero is not gonna be in that spot when you put this together. What you do is you get the needle to move as far as you can before it turns around and tries to leave and go back. Where it stops, that's where you, you turn your dial to zero. And so what that does is basically sets this bore gauge that zero is exactly the size of this journal. Um, and I'll say that again, I set this up like this so that the zero on this gauge reads exactly to the hundred thousandth of an inch or ten thousandth of an inch, no, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, yeah, ten thousandths of an inch uh, to this journal. So this is now set very accurate to the size of this. So now the next thing to be concerned about is getting your uh, surface prepped. Um, what you wanna do is make sure you have all of your oils and stuff off of here. You know, you don't wanna be pressuring any, uh, you don't wanna hydro lock anything. So make sure your surfaces are super duper clean, everything looks good. So we're gonna take our main cap and I'm gonna drop it into place. Okay, and that sets in there nice. You wanna make sure it's nice and flat, which it is. Now the next important thing, whatever hardware you use to tighten this down is very important because the different hardwares that you use, so right here we're using the ARP hardware um, and then we have ARP side bolts. If I tightened it with regular main cap bolts from Ford and measured it, uh, it's not gonna be the same because when you tighten down the ARP hardware, what's called clamping pressure is different and that will actually flex the aluminum and the steel into a different shape. So when this block went to the machine shop, we had them line hone the crank area, the main uh, caps, so that um, it was straight and true, and we also did it with this hardware. So I gave them this hardware, they installed this hardware, and then they cut the main uh, line hone. So it's a very important that you do that. Um, these are already oiled, so I've got my hardware, a little bit of oil on them, bring them down. The other piece that's kind of important when you're doing this is your torque specs. Um, so this block, the machine shop was nice enough to actually put the torque specs on here for me. So inners are 60, out 25, side bolts are 35. 
So that's what we're gonna do. So I've got my snap-on torque wrench here. I'm gonna set it to 60. Bingo, looks good. And then I've got my socket. So we'll go ahead and tighten these down. There it is. There it is. All right, now, another important thing is make sure you move it and reset your torque for 25, because if I try and crank that little one down to 60, you're gonna break stuff. So we come down to 25, and it's important to remember your torque, uh, you know, um, patterns. So we need to do our inners first, outers next, and then the side bolts last. Um, so let me get my, uh-oh, lost my tool. There it is, the 10 millimeter, man. 10 millimeters always running away from us, forever and ever. Okay. Uh, when I torque down, just my technique to torque down, torquing down bolts on an engine stand is I just throw my foot behind the wheel that's gonna be trying to push, because if I do that, it's gonna try and turn it. So I just put my foot there, and then I give it a, you can go ahead and work it. These are much easier, because they're smaller, less torque. All right. Now, this Texid block has these side nuts that are in here. They're an Allen key, so I just rotate these in. And these are about 20, uh, 20 foot pounds. So tighten that one down. Let me get this one tightened down. All right. And then I'm gonna switch back to 10. And these side bolts are 30, Five. So I'm gonna set this to 35. Set the side bolt in. So now, with this hardware and these torque specs that the machine shot gave me, um, the main cap is torqued down to exactly what it was torqued down to when they line honed the crank. Super important that you are doing exactly what the machine shop did. Um, there's all, you know, you can throw together whatever you want, but this type of precision is what keeps things together pretty much guaranteed, unless there's a uh, manufacturer issue with a part, like a rod bolt, or something like that. All right, so now we've got our main cap tightened down perfectly, bearings in there, everything looks good. So now we're ready to measure. So we're gonna take our bore gauge and we're gonna put it in here and this little centering piece centers it. And bingo. All right, so this is gonna be kind of hard for y'all to see maybe. So as I move this back and forth, you can see the, the pin rolls till it finds that spot that it turns around and that's your measurement. So it's right there, which each line on here is point zero 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 five right so each longer line is point zero zero one so we have point zero zero two which is on the money um, a tight engine is about point zero zero one eight one seven um, one five is a really really tight engine um, zero zero two is is about right for a uh, race engine so now I'm going to do to the side. Oops. There we go. All right. A little looser that way. So Left to right is a little bit uh, looser, which is fine. So it's a little wider here than it is here, um, but your main measurement is gonna be straight up and down on this thing. 
Um, so I'm actually really satisfied with that point. Uh, 002 is, like I said, it's pretty much on the money. Perfect. Um, and then, you know, you don't have to worry about the little scuffs it does when you put this on there. You're not really damaging anything when you do that. Um, but that's the proper way to, to do oil clearance. Um, far more accurate than a plastic gauge. And like I said, you know, this is, a, this is still a tedious process. I'm actually gonna measure each one of these main journals separately. If it's all perfect, this measurement will slide across each one and be perfect. If it's not, then I'll have to remove the, uh, move this thing and then re-zero my other gauge. So I'm gonna install, start from the back. Actually, I'm, I've already done this one, so I'm actually gonna pull them out here. And I'll start with this one. And because I need to have space for the bore gauge, actually, that's not gonna work. So I will have to start with this one. So I gotta pull all these back off and start with this one. Measure, 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 measure. And we already know that one's good. I did this one first so that it was an easy video for you guys. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's how you check your uh, main clearances uh, for your main bearings. You do the same thing with the rods. And when you do the rods, you have to tighten the rods down and then, and then measure the rod bearing clearance. Um, I'm contemplating if I want to do that or not because rod bolts only have so many times you can tighten them down before they're, they're stretched. So I'm not sure how many times the machine shop tightened them down. So I might just trust that the machine shop did it right and I might just do maybe, oof, I don't know, maybe one rod. Um, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust that the machine shop did it well because the machine shop is a really good um, shop that I go to in Jacksonville. It's called Horsepower by Hedrick. Um, and they are top notch. They don't do every block and every engine, but they're, they're top notch. Um, the other piece I wanted to show you was doing the bore measurement. Um, the only problem we have with trying to do a bore measurement right now is I don't have a torque plate. So if you don't have a torque plate, then your bore measurement is not gonna be completely accurate. Um, because like I said before, with the hardware that you use to tighten things down, when you tighten down the bore, it flexes the, the bore out of round and you do that before you hone it. So when you flex it out of round, then you cut it perfectly straight. When you loosen it back up, it goes out of round. So all right now, these actually shouldn't be perfectly round. Um, it's gonna be when I tighten the head down with those ARP bolts that they'll then be perfectly round. Um, if I had a torque plate, I could place it on there, tighten it down and do all my checks. Um, but torque plates are kind of expensive and I don't have one yet. So, um, you know, we just leave it as is. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Um, and I'll be coming out with more stuff. I got that supercharger video coming out soon. I got approved to go pick up the supercharger, the third one this weekend. So I'll have a root style blower, I'll have a twin screw blower, and I'll have a centrifugal uh, vortex style blower. And I'm gonna put all those on the table and explain each one and what they do and what the benefits and, and uh, basically the science behind each, each type of supercharger um, to help you make a decision if that's what you're looking to do. Anyway, appreciate you uh, watching and have a good day.